All right, wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for joining me uh, for the uh, September 2022 uh, Tewksbury Genealogy uh, Group uh, meeting. Uh, today's, uh, this month's featured presentation, Tips and Tricks for Searching uh, Newspapers Online for Genealogical Research. Newspapers can provide a wealth of information to help you fill in gaps in your family history research. Uh, this presentation will explain how to search for newspapers online, beginning with the digitized newspapers typically available through library websites. This presentation is led by Janine Bjork, uh, who has uh, found thousands of elusive items for her family, her students' families, and her clients' families for more than a decade. She will demonstrate how to access both free and fee online newspaper resources, including their interfaces and the best practices for searching on your own. So all 64 of us, let's give a big virtual round of applause to Janine for joining us here tonight. And Janine, you can take it away. Thanks so much. All right. Can we start with the poll? Polls? Absolutely, yes. Okay. So everybody, good evening. Um, I'm trying to get a sense of how familiar you folks are with newspaper searches. So um, Robert's gonna put some questions up for you. There are only four questions, they're multiple choice. Um, again, it'll just give me a sense of who's in the audience and how fast to go. Maria, it's good to see you. There is a handout, he'll put it up again because you must have come in late. So Janine, um, I preloaded the polls, but I have just gone to the polls and it says no polls created. So, so bear with me a second, I apologize. I, I did this when you emailed me earlier and I'm not- uh, I'm Tell not you what, in the event you don't get it up, we're gonna try the presentation. Let's do that. I can always quickly copy and paste them in. Uh, this will be okay. very ugly looking though, uh, one second. I don't know what happened. All right, so you, have, you even gave me instructions. <laughs> Look at that. That's all right. all right. So for what it's worth, I do teach genealogy. These are some of my students at Norwalk Community College in Connecticut. And for what it's worth, um, we have done multiple programs on newspapers. So I've got about eight weeks of material. Tonight, we're going to do an hour maybe a little less so that you have enough time for questions. But in that hour, I hope to cover some things that my students have told me were particularly valuable to them. Again, these are NCC students. I went to New Jersey, did things on finding New Jersey family. Um, same search techniques apply. Likewise, finding your Irish and Irish American family. We spent some time looking at Irish newspapers in that program. Um, finding your Jewish American family, finding your Italian American family, I spoke at the New England Regional Genealogical Conference both in 2017 and 2019. We'll be doing that again um, this spring. So the handout, which was um, not emailed to you, excuse me, it was put in the chat. The handout is going to be very, very helpful for all the things that I wish I had time to tell you, but that I didn't tell you. And let me just give you an idea of what, what the handout's about. This guy right here, his name is William Strutz, is my great-great-grandfather. And when I was introduced to genealogy by um, my sister-in-law, she had no idea what she was, <laughs> what she was opening up. My great-great-grandfather was murdered by a jealous husband who happened to be his best friend on Pearl Street in Syracuse, New York in 1894. And when I went to the newspapers to look for what was going on, um, I found three major mistakes in a local newspaper. One, this thing happened in July, not June of 1894. Second, um, Henry Vogler shoots William Stutz. They left out an R in Strutz, or if you're German, Strutz. And finally, there was some nonsense um, trying to sanitize what happened. Uh, I'll give you a hint there probably was some reason for the jealousy. Okay, so in this handout, I also give you 10 tips, which we'll go over a little bit later. There's my great-great-grandfather and the email that tipped me off that there might be something to look up. She had found one story because she did it online with microfilm. I found 150, excuse me, she did it in person in the library. She found the microfilm copy of one story. I found about 150 because this thing went viral. All right, so also on the handout, you will see some information about OCR. 
OCR is optical character recognition. It's one of the questions in the polling that we're going to do. Um, this is the New York world story that ran at two o'clock in the afternoon. The murder suicide happened at close to eight in the morning and the AP and UP um, had it up that afternoon. So the first story that we see was at two o'clock in New York, first one with a, a you know, a timestamp. Um, the next story that we see with a timestamp is Lowell, Massachusetts at 5 p.m. Okay. And you've also got contact information for me. I've produced a tabloid sized handout, which if you find it unwieldy and you don't have a tabloid sized printer and you can't get to one, write to me, I'll break it down and you'll be able to get it into letter sizes. It'll be bite sized and won't be so pretty, but I'll get all the information in. So what is optical character recognition? We're gonna talk about this a couple of times during the presentation. Optical recognition is the technology that allows the page that you can see me holding in my hand to be digitized and then made searchable online. And we'll go into some detail about that. OCR does not read like the human eye. Your eye will go across a line of text. And even if there's a misspelling in there, or even if there's um, um, you know, some punctuation problems or whatever, you'll figure it out. But OCR doesn't. OCR looks at individual characters, not even letters, numbers, whatever. It, it looks at splotches and it tries to make sense of them. So when it looks at those letters or symbols or whatever, it's looking for a pattern and it's trying to match a pattern. I've seen some horrible old German script that I couldn't imagine I would ever be able to read, but OCR could because it had um, a library to compare against. Okay, finally, it recognizes and identifies each character one at a time. Again, it doesn't read whole words. So when you're trying to find your people and you're not finding them, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks for how you might get around this, this problem of one character at a time and one character being out of place can be a problem. By the way, my great great grandfather has a Twitter page for a variety of reasons. We haven't updated it lately. Um, Elon Musk can do his thing, whatever. And I have lots of examples of these stories. I'm only going to show you a couple tonight, but there was a lot written that differs from one local reporter's account to the other. So it's clear to me that there was some haste and some sloppy reporting. I'm just going to be kind. Sloppy reporting because it's impossible for everything that I read about these guys to be true. Their immigration stories were very, very different depending on the story you read. Um, one story suggested that they rarely drank and another one said they were both drunks. So go figure. Okay, so Henry Vogler is the man who killed my great-great-grandfather, William Strutz. I only tell you that because this is probably the last time you're going to hear Henry Vogler. From this point forward, you're going to get all kinds of information that was misdone. Oh, by the way, I have, I told you there was a surprise coming. I have a Vogler in my DNA matches. As a matter of fact, she is a direct descendant of Henry Vogler. She is the great, great granddaughter and she was born a Vogler. She is one of, I think we're up to seven Voglers who match Strutz descendants. So one of two things is going on. Either these guys, either the jealousy was with, you know, there was a reason for the je jealousy or they were related and they didn't know it. And I've also been um, contacted by other descendants who um, have sent me, I mean, we've had a nice exchange, <laughs> who've sent me uh, souvenir items from the Voglers that have enhanced my story. Okay, I'm gonna do a real quick history of the American newspaper. Starting in 1690, the first one is published, um, Ben Franklin becomes incredibly important in newspapers. We'll get back to that in a moment and the revolution. But in 1690, a paper is produced. It is not authorized by the British authorities. It is distributed in a coffee house in Boston. And as soon as the British authorities become aware, they confiscate every co copy they can find. You can find it online, but it only, only one issue was published and the publisher barely uh, escaped going to jail. By 1775, there were 31 newspapers, but I got to tell you, they came and went because of things like a fire, 
um, or the British authorities shutting them down or the lack of paper. Anyway, see this growth leading up to 1200 newspapers in 1835? That is that is technologically um, ex explainable. It's it's paper became cheap and printing became industrialized. And so with the Industrial Revolution in the 1830s, they went from rag paper to pulp paper. Pulp paper is not nearly as durable, but nonetheless, that's why we see that rise in the number of papers. OK, there also was um, much more ad support for like the penny papers right. that the working class were reading rather than right. what the elites were reading. The elites were paying six cents a copy. The regular people were paying a penny a copy. Again, once industrialization happened, once literacy was growing, um, once it became clear that there were immigrants and working class people with money in their pockets, there were publishers to meet their hunger for information. The number of US papers peaked in the 1890s at about 20,000, and I'm including weekly papers and monthly papers. But as um, radio and TV came in, crash, burn, whatever, patent insides and outsides. This is how small town papers could put out eight pages a week. Um, one publisher, most often male, had um, the ability to buy for the cost of the paper Forget about the reporting that went into it and what have you. Six pre-printed pages that then the local news, the local logo, the whatever was added to. And there were 7,000, as it says in the middle here. Thousands of weeklies did this. Um, Printers Inc. estimated in 1894, there were more than 7,000 U.S. weeklies who relied upon these newspaper unions. And there were five big ones. And here's an example, the same story about Henry Volger, should be Vogler, a night watchman who shot and killed William Stretz, a carpenter at Syracuse. Identical stories appeared in two papers that are in different states with independently owned papers. Here's the same story across three papers, one in Iowa, um, I think one is in Wisconsin and one is in Nebraska. Same story in the same column, uh, again, pre-printed union papers. I just tell you that because if you find a news item about one of your ancestors back in the 1890s and you find it in several different papers, I want to explain to you right now, it's the newspaper unions that's responsible for that. These are all newspaper union stories. And in two days, they all had the William Strutz story um, from one of two different sources, either the AP or the UPI and, or UP. And then it wasn't called UPI then just UP. And then they were um, picked up by these five newspaper unions and came out in these papers more than a week after the murder of my great, great grandfather. Okay. I was talking about crashing and burning earlier, thanks to radio and TV. Nothing was as devastating to newspapers as the internet has been and how it has poached advertisers and um, readers. So as you can see, this starts in 1950 and ends in 2010, it's actually gotten worse since then. And so we have fewer and fewer papers. So far, everybody on board, we're gonna do some more about OCR now. So again, I'm gonna give you some more tips on how to get around OCR. OCR, optical character recognition, one item at a time, one character at a time, one symbol at a time. OCR reads old newspapers so we don't have to. And there I'm holding a sheet, which again, could easily be digitized and read character by character, symbol by symbol. And I already told you, it's not like the human eye it does not read words. It recognizes and identifies each character. It does not know, like when you go into, into ancestry.com and you put in Albert, I don't know, Albert Johnson, it looks for not only Albert, but Al or Bert, or maybe the guy's initials, you know, Johnson. No, not with newspapers. It It's looking for exactly what you tell it you're looking for, unless you do one of the tips and tricks I'm gonna show you. It does not correct for a reporter or a printing error. Here's an example. Told you the guy's name was Henry Vogler. Henry Tolger, a night watchman. It's wrong. Um, let's go on to another paper. This is from Omaha. Again, the guy's name is Henry Vogler, Helia Volger. 
How does this happen? Did somebody well, take the stuff off the wire and like spill coffee on it? Um, were two people involved and maybe one was eating a sandwich as uh, they were dictating to the other? Helia, how do you get Helia out of Henry? I don't know, but I found this story using keyword searches because over and over again, I found things were copied. The night watchman uh, shot and almost instantly killed a bullet into his head or his own temple, excuse me, and in dying two hours later, the cause was jealousy. These things were repeated in story after story. So I started playing with keyword searches in July of 1894 and got a lot more stories. Okay, it doesn't correct for flaked off type. You know how newspapers are printed, right? Ink is pressed onto a paper, paper page. So see all this stuff that's missing? How did I find this story to know that it was something I was looking for? Alfred Kiji, a New York Italian board tenor singer. Here's how, I see, actually he's baritone, but anyway, here's how I found it. I knew from his obituary that he had sung for President Roosevelt. And so I did some searches that involved Roosevelt, Kiji, found out that he sang at a particular dinner. And then I searched that, that period of time. It's like a day, two days, whatever looking for, in this case, George Burns, Gracie Allen, Jack Powell, and Alfred Kiji were entertainers at a dinner for President Roosevelt, okay? Um, likewise, Alfred Kiji was on this bill with George Jessel, Burns and Allen, et cetera, et cetera. So if I go back here and I talk about the flaked off type, I looked up keywords and landed on this story. Let's do another. Um, dinner for president, Alfred Kiji is in there. Just for what it's worth, um, I went in and I looked for Alfred Kiji and Alfredo Kiji. Alfred Kiji, I got one hit in New York State Historic Newspapers. Alfredo, I got 24 hits. When he was um, first singing, they reported his, his age too young. When he was singing later in his life, I'm sorry, they report early in his life, they report his age older than he was because you know you didn't want to say this is a 19 year old kid. And then later in his life, they cut years off. Likewise, when he sang for an operatic audience, they called him Alfredo. When he sang for a non-operatic uh, audience, like he sang at some Scottish thing, they called him Alfred. So I had to look for both Alfredo and Alfred. Not every resource is gonna let you use wildcards. Okay, um, newspapers.com. Again, Alfred Kiji, in this case, Alfredo Kiji. You can't even pick the Kiji out of there, but I picked it out because I knew the name of the opera company he was in. And again, I played around with that as well as some of the performers who he was involved with. Okay. It doesn't correct for missing parts of the page. Um, can you see what's going on here? This is tape. I'll show you more closely. This is tape that was... It, you know, a, a page got got um, beat up and they taped it back together. And everywhere the tape appears, when the camera took the picture of the page, it's obliterated the type. Likewise, there is bacteria or there is the turning of pages or whatever that accounted for some other pages being beat up. So if I'm looking for my people, when I get through with the low hanging fruit, searching their name for exactly what it was and exactly the variations that I can think of, I start playing with keywords so I can find pages like these. Um, in this case, my people made this, the, the page, um, Henry Vogler and William Stutz, not Strat Stutz. So I know what the source of the story was. It was the Syracuse Journal, okay? But again, there is tape through there. And if your people are underneath the tape, you're gonna need some keywords to find them. This was um, a half a page that came through. There's the other half of the page. And they don't line up, as you can see. There's a lot missing. Keyword searches are going to help you figure out if your people are in there. It does not correct imperfections of the newspaper page or printing. For example, see how blurry and dark that is? I was actually looking on July 2nd or 3rd. I was looking for syllables because hyphenated words, um, they don't pick up unless you put the hyphen in. So I was looking for V-O-L on July 2nd or 3rd, and I came up with this Rocky Mountain news story. 
by the way, when I went through and I tried to figure out what was readable by OCR, the New York was readable and the VOL was readable. Nothing else on here is readable as you and I can read with our eyes. Jealousy caused it, Syracuse, New York, July 2nd, Henry Volger, Vogler. Oh, that isn't correct. Excuse me. It should be Vogler. It's Volger. I was looking for the incorrect syllable as well. A night watchman. Again, your eyes can pick it up, but OCR could not. Um, here's another one. See how much is missing of this page? It happens to be the, the obituary for somebody who, uh, distant family member. But nonetheless, you can't pick up anything from what didn't get through when the camera took the picture of this page. Hey, there's some variations in microfilm. And I got to tell you, you usually get what you pay for. The two images on the left, this is Henry Vogler's granddaughter uh, and her wedding announcement. The two on the left came from Ancestry and newspaperarchive.com. And frankly, I think they're working off the same um, microfilm. The one on the right is from a free site, FultonHistory.com. FultonHistory.com generally is getting third generation uh, microfilm, which means somebody's got a pristine copy. It's probably in a vault of the newspaper. A second copy is made. A third copy is made. By the time the third copy is made, it's being distributed through newspaper through libraries. Excuse me. And unfortunately, um, her image is just unreadable or un unrecognizable because FultonHistory.com does its best to recalibrate everything to get the most word accuracy they can get. So these, actually, these letters on the right, the far right story, look better than the ones on the left. Agreed? This is my grandmother, Bjork. Um, this is a story about babies who were meeting their fathers for the first time after World War I because dad was called to Europe before the baby was born. And my Aunt Helen and my grandmother, Ancestry, and then Newspaper Archive, and then Fulton History. And again, the type is pretty good, but the image is awful. Okay, here's the exception to the rule, and it's like one of the only ones I found. It's my mother's wedding picture in Ancestry. Here it is in newspapers.com, and here it is in Fulton History. And Fulton History actually looks better than the other two. Thank you, Mom. Okay, OCR. It's supposed to read down a column and then the next column of the story, but it doesn't always because of some things I can explain and some things I can't. So a column may have um, a line dividing one column from another in a story. And if that line is flaked off, disappears, some parts of it disappear, you might be reaching into the next column of another story. In this case, this is my grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary. And it went across two lines before it went down the first column and then to the second column. So if you were looking at the names in the first two lines, they don't match up. Again, you do keyword searches or you use some of the tips and tricks we're going to discuss. It doesn't recognize alternate names. So somebody named Caroline, if you um, have a reporter who or a printer who called her Carolyn, it's not going to come up. Uh, unless you use the tips and tricks, or they use a C, or they just call her Miss, whatever her name was. Not going to come up. Here's some basic search queries that you use. This happens to be FultonHistory.com. We're going to move into some um, Tewksbury and Boston Library resources shortly. But anyway, Janine, sorry to interrupt you. Sure. Uh, I, I do have the surveys complete. I Yay. Don't, do we do we want to bother uh, with yeah, that? Yeah, that's perfect. Let's do it. All right. So let's do it. We're about halfway through right now, and it will change what I might do going forward. Go ahead. All right. I um so I'm stop sharing. Yeah. So first of all, I'm a hundred percent certain that I uploaded these prior. So I'm not sure why they didn't appear. Uh, <laughs> but they're gonna show up all at once, I think. Uh let me let me see here. I if everybody, very, if everybody who could plays along, that's great. All right, I did this very sloppily. All right, so I think you see all questions. There's four questions. The first question is, what is your experience with online newspapers? The second question, which is kind of how this is my this is how I worded it. Uh, why are you here? The third question: How long have you been using newspapers for genealogy, uh, if you have at all? And then the fourth question, you can actually select more than one answer for the fourth question. Um, and it's just um, 
talking what are you about, about? Yeah, gauging. What are you your, hoping to hear more about? Exactly. Yeah. So let's take uh, 30 to 60 seconds and uh, fill out the survey that'll help uh, Janine uh, tailor the rest uh, of her talk. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to check the chat. Um, okay, so I'm going to put, I, for a few folks that came in late, I'm going to put the uh, handout in the chat again. So one second. I will also email the handout to everyone tomorrow morning. All right, bear with me. And I don't see any questions in the chat yet. Uh, Terry uh, has a few questions that I think you may address as you go, Janine. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, though, I don't see any questions. So I think we don't have to worry about that right now. Uh, I'm very slowly getting the handout into the chat. Okay, so handout is in the chat. And um, let's see here, we have about 40 responses so far. Uh, I'm good when you're good, Janine. The poll's been up for uh, almost two minutes now. Um, okay. So I think I'm gonna end the poll. Hopefully I don't hear any screams. Want... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we've got a pretty good response rate, about two thirds. All right, so I'm gonna end the poll and then hopefully we'll see the results. Okay, so Janine, can you see the results now? I can. I can. So the greatest response was I access online newspapers that are available for free, not from a library, but outside a library. And there are people using fee sites, cool, and never accessed, never, 12 out of 42. Okay, 13 out of 42. Good enough. Um, can you scroll down? Oh, I can scroll down. I think you scroll down, yeah. Okay. And why are you here? The greatest number of you. I would like to know more about newspapers for genealogy. Okay. Very few of you are using it for something other than genealogy. That would be five out of 42. Okay. Good to know. Um, number three, how long have you been using? Okay. Uh, been doing this for less than six months. 11 of you. Uh, six months to a couple years, 13. 16, uh, two or more years. And then I would add myself to the two people who said I'm a newspaper nut and I've been doing this for over a decade. Okay. Number four, biggest answers. Wow. I'm interested in best practices for searching online newspapers. Wonderful. Second highest number. I want to learn about free online newspaper resources. Those are going to come from our handout in particular. Um, and then Pretty good responses. I'm familiar with OCR. I am unfamiliar with OCR. Exactly the same number. All right. And Although finally, we did ask that question after you talked about OCR for about 15 minutes. Okay, good enough. Some people became experts overnight. And I want to learn about subscription newspaper resources. We will do all of this. Thank you all. Okay. Let's share screen again. That's okay. And back to where we were sharing. And we're going to go full screen. Having the lights in, in the uh, eyes so that you can see me is making it hard to do everything else. Anyway, so there are four basic searches available on Fulton History. It's the um, first on your handout, it's the first of many free newspaper resources I give you, but let me do them real quickly because almost every site uses some variation on these, all of the words. So I'm looking for Tewksbury and public and library. If the page does not have Tewksbury and public and library, it's not gonna come back in my results. Any of the words that would be rather than all three and, and it would be, or. So it could be Tewksbury is on the page or public is on the page or library is on the page. Any one of those three and you'll get results. Obviously you'll get a lot more results when you do any of the words. The exact phrase, I want exactly Tewksbury public library. If it isn't Tewksbury public library, I don't want it. So that'll throw out all the times when somebody's last name is Tewksbury 
or um, you know, there's a, a big story about libraries in the Boston uh, paper and Tewksbury just happens to be one of them. Um, it might say, no. Tewksbury Library instead of Tewksbury Public Library. And so if it's not exactly what you asked for, it's not gonna happen. And finally, there's a Boolean search. And there are variations on Boolean search that are not called Boolean anywhere, but on Fulton history. So let me explain Boolean as best I can, but know that on Fulton history, there are FAQs, frequently asked questions available to you from the landing page. And it will really help if you explore this a little further. A Boolean search. A Boolean search is a way to link things like, I had an aunt who was a realtor. And so I was looking for Jean Quadrini and not Colonial and not Cape Cod and not Ranch and not um, Broker and not whatever to find her family stories rather than the hundreds of real estate listings that she was involved in over the years. That's a Boolean search, putting and not in front of all the things that I don't want. I've got a cousin whose surname is Birmingham. I want Birmingham and not Alabama. Got it? Okay, that's a Boolean search. There's, it's a lot more complicated than that, and we can go into it more if you like at the end of the presentation. But those are the basic searches that you'll find from site to site. And why are we not advancing? Come on. There we go. So at the Tewksbury Public Library, these are some of the free newspapers that are available. You have to have a Tewksbury account, Tewksbury Public Library account. These are some of the things that are available. So Janine, um, I don't think your uh, slide ever advanced for us for some reason. Um, I'm gonna for stop sharing. Yeah. I'm gonna start sharing again. Yeah. And see what happens. Okay. So you're seeing my screen and it yeah, says browse by title? Yes. Yep. Now Beautiful. we're good. Okay. So that's the one you missed. Um, for those of you who are saying, I don't have a Tewksbury library account, and why do I care about this? Well, Advantage Archives, who does those free newspapers, has papers throughout the country. So for example, I've been able to read about my grandmother Bjork in Casanova, New York, doing um, knitting clubs for socks for soldiers during World War II. You know, I've been able to read about my grandfather, the Justice of the Peace, being involved in things, whatever, in a very small Casanova newspaper, thanks to Advantage Archives has been digitized. So if you look at all these dots, there are a lot of places you might run into your family using Advantage Archives. So let's just take a real quick look at their um, queries. So go to the Tewksbury Public Library site, go into the newspapers, this is where you'll land, and you see it says all of the words, and then it gives you dates between this and this. I'm going to suggest that you want to do an advanced search. So going back a page, um, advanced search up here in the upper right, rather than doing a basic search, unless you got a really unusual name, I would do an advanced search. And you're going to find you have choices here, not only all the words, but all of the words, exact phrase, any of the words, or none of the words, which again is a Boolean search, although they're not calling it a Boolean search there. And if you wonder where the name Boolean came from, the guy's name was Bull. He was English. He did a lot of work that basically made computers possible. But during his lifetime, nobody believed anything he did was of value. So the computer industry, in order to honor him and the foresight he had, um, came up with Boolean searches to honor him. So again, just as I did in FultonHistory.com, all of the words, exact phrase, any of the words, and in this case, instead of a General Boolean search, none of the words. Let's do it. All right, so I went in and I looked for exactly Tewksbury Library. And it shows me that there are 417 results for the exact phrase Tewksbury Library. And then I went in and I did Tewksbury Public Library and I got 1,020. So again, Tewksbury Library, 417. Tewksbury Public Library, 1,020. And um, this particular story had Tewksbury Library 
repeat it over and over again and you get a little preview of what's coming, okay? Tewksbury Endowment Fund, yada, 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 beautiful. I also went in and looked up um, Tewksbury Library and the search came back and there's this letter to the editor. Friends have fun plans, um, great. And I realized that when I went in and looked for a Tewksbury Library, not everything came up that had Tewksbury Library in it, but when I did library, everything came up. And then I got real specific and I said, what is the problem that Tewksbury didn't come up? Do you see that extra whatever on top of the U? The, the optical character recognition didn't recognize that as a U. And so when I searched just for Tewksb and I didn't go any further, it told me, yeah, we got Tewksb and I could find this. So I don't know what to tell you other than I just keep going in and over and over and over because I'm really persistent would be a kind way <laughs> to describe me. Some would say OCD. All right. Um, my heritage is available with a um, Boston Library card. So go into my heritage library edition. And I understand that all of you who are in Massachusetts residents have the ability to get a Tewksbury Library, excuse me, to get a Boston Library card. Do it. You should do it. Getting my heritage for free is relatively new and it will be absolutely worth the effort. Okay. So I went into the newspaper name index and I said to myself, let me look up Tewksbury Library. And when I went in the newspaper name index, it didn't come back. I used Tewksbury is, is the first name and library is the second. But I went back to just a general search of Tewksbury and library. I got stories. Go figure. Um, give me half a second. I will be right back. Robert, you can take over for a sec. And so actually, folks, uh, what I'm going to do in the chat is I'm going to put the uh, uh, registration page uh, to get a free Boston Public Library e-card. And as Janine mentioned, if you live in Massachusetts, own property in Massachusetts, or pay taxes in Massachusetts, you are entitled to a Boston Public Library e-card. And that gets you access to about 99% of their uh, digital resources, including all their newspaper databases and most of their genealogical databases. So I'll put information about that in the chat right now. And I'll also include information about that um, in the email tomorrow morning. But again, if you're from Dracut or you're from Chumsford or you're from Western Mass, uh, you are eligible for a Boston Public Library e-card and it's completely free. And as I note in the handout, um, it's ProQuest who will give you the New York Times via your Boston Library card. It will be um, ProQuest that gives you the Wall Street Journal via your Boston Library card, and also My Heritage. Totally worth the effort to get it if you have the ab ability. So, for what it's worth, um, I've got how many res how many responses? I I've got a bunch of responses, but I want you to know that in my results for my search to Xperia Library through My Heritage. The top result is the one that is the most relevant. And how do they know it's the most relevant? It's based on how many times the words that I gave it that I'm searching for appeared, how close they appeared together, if they appeared in a title. So this particular story is the one that was the, um, the first result and the most relevant. So it's from the Boston Globe, it's from the late 1890s, the quest for Tewksbury Library and Jeremiah Kitteridge of Brookline. Um, Ty, yeah, right. Okay, his will was was um, read in court, and he left five thousand dollars for the Tewksbury Public Library. Again, I looked for Tewksbury Library. There it is in the headline, and then the words Tewksbury and Library uh, appear again in the story. That was the most relevant. Okay, I went to look in the Boston Globe via the Boston Public Library. I did an advanced search, and here are the search terms I'm able to deal with, and or not. What would and be? If we were in a room, I'd make sure that somebody raised their hand and said, well, that's all of the words. 
But since I can't hear you, I'm just going to pretend that somebody is screaming right now. Call me, call me. Okay. Or is any of the words and not is a form of a Boolean search. Okay. Not. So as I said earlier, Birmingham, not Alabama. And when I look for Tewksbury and public and library, I get, um, these are my first 20 results. These are all modern, by the way. Uh, this, the access to the Boston Globe is for um, 1980 forward is what it is. Then I ask for Tewksbury and public and library and genealogy, and I get three results. Oh, if I go backwards, by the way, I got 990 results where Tewksbury and public and library appeared on a page. But when I asked, uh, I've got a link in here. We're not going to go to the link. You're just going to trust me. Tewksbury and public and library and genealogy. Now I'm down to three. And by the way, they all appeared on the same page, but none of them were about the genealogy. Um, club or the genealogy projects of the library. So it was like Tewksbury, library, genealogy. We're on a page, but not together. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> As you can see, public and genealogy, they're not sitting close together. In the second thing, genealogy, public, life, not sitting close together. Tewksbury is in there, but not close together. And there's the third one. Okay. Um, and I can also in those three, yeah, I can break it down. You can see it's not an exact Tewksbury Public Library genealogy, but rather those words. I went and looked at 19th century US newspapers. This is through the Gale primary sources, again, with your Boston library card. And I looked for Tewksbury Library and what I found was an obituary and in here, I didn't do the whole story, let's do this. Um, Public library at Tewksbury appeared in an obituary. Then the guy had been an employee. Okay. Caroline Roots Reese, and this is the closing part of this, and then we're going to go to questions. Caroline Roots Reese was a suffragist. She was a school, a head of a school, um, what is now Choate, Rosemary Hall. She was responsible for Rosemary Hall for decades. And um, Rosemary Hall was originally in Massachusetts and then it moved to Greenwich, Connecticut. And since I was living in Greenwich, Connecticut and asked to do a Greenwich program, we did it in Caroline Roots Reese. And what I want you to know is if I ask for exactly Caroline Roots Reese, I get 145 responses. That was when I did this program in 2017. And Fulton History had 36,000 pages at the time. So 145 responses. Am I doing that correctly? Yeah, 145 responses out of 36,000 pages. I did, I did a program with Caroline Roots Reese again four years later, and there were 224 hits. Exactly. Caroline Roots Reese spelled correctly out of the 50,000 pages available through FultonHistory.com. And I went and looked again. Oh, shucks, Janine, that should be 2022. But anyhow, I looked again this afternoon. There are now 236 out of 51,000 pages for exactly Caroline Roots Reese. Bottom line, do not give up. There are new pages added every day. You may not find your people today. You may find them tomorrow. And again, new pages are coming in every day, some places more quickly than others. I did a fuzzy search. Um, when you go onto Ancestry.com, and I assume most of you have gone onto Ancestry.com and looked up something, you'll notice that, um, yeah, Jeremiah comes up, but also Jerry, um, Jerry, Gerald, whatever. I mean, they give you all kinds of options for something other than what you're looking for in the event that might be a match to. That's what a fuzzy search is. And a fuzzy search on FultonHistory.com, one of the newspaper resources that are free that I gave you, that has 51 million plus pages. Okay. A fuzzy search means you can go in and you can ask for a specific number of characters that you want it to um, be off by. 
So I generally do a three character search. That's a three there. And when I look for Caroline Roots Reese and three characters can be out of place, I went from 136 to 171 hits. When I went in and looked at just C Roots Reese, because sometimes um, she appeared, for example, in lists of school moms, and they didn't put her full name because Roots Reese is Caroline Roots Reese is too long when somebody else was Evelyn Smith. Anyway, 21 came back for C Roots Reese. Exactly. That's why it's in quotes. Exactly C Roots Reese. Um, there were eight when I did C Roots Reese differently. Oh, that's the difference between fuzzy and not fuzzy. Sorry. Okay. Um, 21. When I just look for line roots Reese, just line roots Reese. 145 again, Caroline Roots Reese, but when I put in line roots Reese, I got 21 hits back. Okay. 148 when I did Caroline, this is a Boolean search within 10. W slash 10 roots Reese. So I asked for her last name. I asked for Caroline somewhere on the page within 10 characters. In case, for example, it's an obituary, it's Roos Reese, comma, Caroline. 148. Uh, Caroline within 20 of Roots Reese. I went from 148 to 149 when I went from within 10 to within 20. There were 290 when I looked for Caroline wildcard hyphen Reese. Not 136, 290. Uh, likewise, um, when I just looked for something Z hyphen Reese, I had um, many, many hits. I got up to 290. Okay. 219 when I just looked for the TZ. And you can see that Caroline TZ. Okay. Caroline Rue brought me 246 of the potential 290 that I might find. Okay. And that is where I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we can go to some questions and perhaps some live searches. Robert, you're up. All right. Daniel asks, my biggest problem is searching on very common names like Kelly Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, K-E-L-L-E-Y. Even when I limit to names, dates, and locations, there are lots of Catherine Kellys in many New York towns and cities. Sure. Any advice for Daniel? Sure. Okay. So who does that person interact with? The fam club, family, associates, neighbors, um, find a club they belong to, uh, and then start searching those people who were in the club. I have, uh, my mother's maiden name was Quadrini, and all those eyes come out as <laughs> uh, ones or as Fs or as Ts or as apostrophes. I mean, there's just all kinds of ways that eyes get messed up. So I started looking for other people that were in church with my grandmother, who played ball with my grandfather or with my uh, my uncle, who um, were in my mother's high school class. And I got more hits that way. Yeah, Kelly is a problem. No doubt about it. So see if the fan club can help you. Uh, next question comes from Linda. Is anyone digitizing the Worcester Telegram? And Janine, I did do a Google search um, and I went to the Worcester Public Library uh, and the Worcester Public Library has full text of the Worcester Telegram and Gazette uh, from 1989 to current day. So I don't know if that helps you, uh, Linda, but it looks like they have it back to 1989. And I can put the... Um, the link in the uh, in, in your uh, Q and A answer. Uh, did you want to add anything to that, Janine? I, I think I yes. On my handout, I make a point of saying that the um, chroniclingamerica.loc.gov. It's the Library of Congress, and I do it in a big red thing on the back of your handout. I can show it to you in a moment. Um, they have a directory of every newspaper and they will tell you where physical copies exist, be they bound copies or microfilm or whatever for every newspaper in the country. So I would go to, again, um, Chronicling America. You know what, we can do it live. Share my screen. Let's go to, um, I wanna make sure I'm going to the internet. 
Here we go. This is the internet. And let's do it here. Okay, so if you go to Chronicling, mother, I always type well when nobody's watching. <laughs> right here, use S newspaper directory. And once you're in there, we're, we're talking Worcester, right? So we're going to go to W. Okay. And there's like 200. Okay, so let's work our way. I'm going to imagine it's page 200. I don't know. Let's see. And we're too far, so we got to go further. Um, let's try page 211. Not quite. Okay, 213. Come on, 21. Ugh. Stop. 213. Still not. Okay, you see what I'm doing? You're going to do the same thing, and you're going to say it was worth it. Okay, so we're at Wood, not at Worcester yet. Fine, 219. Let's see, page 219. Worcester, there you go. There's all kinds of Worcester papers here. Let's see if the telegram is one of them. Can I make this bigger for you? Sure, I can. And we're going to go to the next page, which should be number 220. Should just start at the end, work my way forward. Okay, Worcester. Worcester Telegram, 1888 to 1989. And then the Sunday Telegram is broken out differently, 1884 to 1886. So let's do this, Worcester Telegram. And when you scroll down here, place of publication, publisher, there's some details. We wanna find out where it's gonna be found. Holdings, view complete holdings information. So these are libraries that have the Worcester Telegram. And original dates. Duke University Library has some years. Elk City Historical Society in Ridgeway, Pennsylvania has some years. Franklin D. Roosevelt Library. It's got a volume in Hyde Park, New York State, Albany, New York. It's 1955 only. I'm thinking when we get to Worcester, that's going to be your best source. Wow. Microfilm service copy 1919, available as microfilm service copy 1888 to 1989. I'd contact the library directly and see if you can get some of their microfilm sent to your public library, okay? And that was updated in 2003. Who knows what's going on today? And then from what I understand, it's digitized after 89. That's what it said on the Worcester yep. library website. So, Thank you for that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, let's jump back into the Q&A. Uh, Cynthia says, would you show us how to do a search on Advantage Archives for someone where you use none of these words? Yeah, sure. so when, when would you use that type of uh, Boolean search? So I, I gave two examples earlier. I'll, I'll repeat those. Okay. So um, my aunt, the realtor, I looked for Jean Quadrini in quotes and not realtor and not yeah. broker and not... Cape Cod, Colonial, Ranch, um, right. Condo, you know, any of the things that she might've been selling as a broker, because I wanted to find her family stuff. And then again, if I wanted to do the hundreds of houses that she sold in her career, I could look those up too. So sure, um, we're gonna share screen. And going back to, <laughs> There it is. And while you're doing that, uh, Janine, just to note that Cynthia in the chat makes a good point. Uh, chrono, going back to the former, uh, the last question, chrono, Chronicling America directly, uh, directory only has listings for repositories that actually responded. I have been to repositories which had lots of papers, but they are not listed in the directory. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Okay. So we're going to the library. We're going to go to research and resources. We're going to look for databases. Um, okay, if I'm going to see, I'm going to turn that off. Sorry, guys. It's not in genealogy. It's in databases and digital collections. All right. Um, and they're directing you to how to get the Boston Globe. All right, I went too far. 
advantage. So I could be I could be wrong, Janine, but I think yep. it's the link if you click on the um, advertiser, advocate, and crier towards the bottom of the page. Got it. Thank you. So that's second to the last one. Got Just it. Here. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go to none of the words. Let's do this. I'm going to make this bigger because I can't see it either. Okay. <sighs> All right. Hmm. It's grayed out for some reason. It is grayed out. Do, do you have to type something first and then can you? Uh... Um, that may be it. Okay, so we're going to look for, search for, uh, all right, let me start with exact phrase between whatever and whatever. I made this too big and I think I lost my search box. Sorry, guys. That's okay. There we, there we go. Exact phrase. Robert, I may ask you to share your screen and do this. What am I doing wrong? Oh, I'm maybe I need to select paper first. Okay, I'm going to select the advertiser. So then it types, types um, you're, you're in the, yep, there you go. Uh-oh, <laughs> my arrest record's gonna come up. All right, yeah, it's still grayed out. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm not certain. Yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about it, but I did. I do think you gave a good example as to when you would use it. All right, tell you what, I'm gonna go, yeah, not gonna play. Well, I can get the word not in there, but no, that's not what we want. Okay, so um, let me go to Genealogy Bank and I'll show you how it works elsewhere if it's working. Mm -hmm. um, so if I go to Genealogy Bank, let me log in. Let's do it, come on. All right, so first name. Hayes. All right. And this is a simple search. I want to go to an advanced search. Here's advanced search. I'm not sure if you guys can see this, and I'm sorry. I'm sort of in the dark so that I can see. <laughs> um, all right. So now we're going to go to <laughs> bigger. Now we're going to go to and not. Keywords, include a keyword, date range, add keywords to explain, uh, to exclude. Okay. Um, prison. Okay. And include a word. Tewksbury. Let's see what happens. Sorry, guys. Now I'm going to make this smaller. And we're going to limit ourselves to Massachusetts. It's already coming back with the results. There are 6,089 hits for Robert in Massachusetts. Okay, and let me update my results because I added that. And instead of 6,000, make this bigger. Instead of 6,000, when I do Robert Hayes and not prison with Tewksbury, um, I'm not like that at all. I'm at 55,000. No. Okay. Sorry, guys. We're going to do this again. There That's is no okay. Iowa. You got the idea? Yeah. Iowa. Okay. But anyway, we've got a lot of stuff coming back and you can go in by state. Again, this is what you're paying for. Uh, for what is... Janine, yeah. if you click update results, will that will that do it? See, see that on It should have. It's not going to make a difference. Yeah, that that brought us down to the six thousand. Yeah. Okay, now we're down to six thousand again. Yeah. Not prison with Tewksbury. <laughs> and again, that just means Tewksbury is on the same page. It doesn't mean they're in the same paragraph or the same story. Right. Okay. Cool. 
Um, for yeah. those who are still hanging in there, and we got a significant number, I can go back to the handout and point out a couple of things um, that you're going to find helpful from my list of papers that you want to look at. So I got to stop sharing first. Mm -hmm. Stop share. And in the share. In the Q&A, uh, Janine, uh, Diane has a question about the Boston Public Library e-card. And so, Diane, uh, I put some information in the chat. I'm not sure if you're one of the one of the folks that can't access the chat, but I'll also email this information tomorrow. But if you go onto the Boston Public Library website, you click on get an e-card. It takes two minutes. You fill out the form. Uh, you have to confirm your email address. And then they send you a an e card, which is essentially a, a like a twenty string barcode, uh, and you can use that to access remotely uh, most of their genealogy and newspaper databases. Uh, so there'll be more information about that in the chat. Uh, uh, sorry, it, sorry, in the uh, email tomorrow. All um, right. Okay. So going back to what I hope will be really helpful information for you. And again, if you have a problem that you can't read this because it's too small and you want to see it broken down, write to me and I'll see what I can do. Okay, so my free sites, Fulton History with over 51 million pages. Love that site. You've got all kinds of surprises in there. I put in New York Historic Newspapers and you're like, but I'm in Massachusetts, listen to me. There was a column from Ireland in a Rochester, New York paper. It was the Catholic Courier, the Catholic Journal, whatever. It was all news from Ireland every week. You have no idea what's going to appear. You have no idea where your people traveled for a wedding, a funeral, a, a convention, or whatever. So check it out. New York State Historic Newspapers. Chronicling America. This is the Library of Congress site. It's free. It costs them about $3 a page of taxpayer dollars to do this. You should take advantage of it. And again, and thank you for the the update. It's only the, the papers that responded or the the repositories that responded that they had the papers that are listed in there, but worth doing. ProQuest, again, you can get some of that through your Boston library card. My suggestion to you is when you travel, go into public libraries and see if they won't give you a card. If you walk into an Onondaga County library, I'm in Syracuse, New York, it's Onondaga County. You just have to show them your identification and you can get a card and you can get ProQuest that includes the LA Times, the full run of the New York Times, the full run of um, the Wall Street Journal. I mean, you can get a lot of stuff. If you're in the Midwest and you're willing to pay $30 for six months, you can get amazing things through the Midwest Genealogical Center in Independence, Missouri. Um, in addition to um, newspaperarchive.com, they've got Civil War newspapers, they've got, going to have to turn something down. <laughs> so folks, we'll be wrapping up in a few minutes. Uh, Janine just has a couple of questions. Uh, okay, um, News Google yeah. Archive, uh, News Google dot com newspapers they stopped supporting this in 2011 and the papers are disappearing but i'm glad i took screenshots of the stuff they had because they had things for my family members in florida in canada in new york in michigan it was worth doing okay local library collections i just can't emphasize enough when you travel look at the local library and see if you can get their card um when you search google and you type in the right keywords you may find your veiled story comes up and i'll show you an example of that in just a second okay newspaperarchive.com could cost you as much as 300 dollars a year they have new owners um there's a deal there ask them you'll find there's a deal they've got good images and over fifteen thousand titles archives.com is an aggregate site i'm just going to skip it for now <laughs> newspapers.com um over 793 million pages great site and somebody's going to say but janine what's that publisher's extra some papers only agreed to participate if they got paid by the click they didn't want a blanket fee they wanted to be paid by the click and that's why three quarters of their papers are publishers extra and you got to pay extra for it ancestry they save their stuff at 100 inches tall amazing the the detail that you can get in there that you can't get from other papers. I love it. And you can also read it as a film strip. 
as you can newspapers.com so you can easily move across pages. Genealogy Bank, I just went on and showed you. Um, while they went up from $69 and change to $99 and change, between Wednesdays and Fridays every week, they run a special. You wait for the right special, it'll be $69 again. And finally, My Heritage, which you can get through the Boston um, Library. They have papers that you can't find elsewhere. I was teaching a class in Stanford, Connecticut for somebody who had Maine ancestors. That was the only place I found his main ancestry. Okay. Um, what did so I Jean, promise you in here? Janine, uh, Whitney has a question, uh, sure. and I think you just mentioned it, but what are the what are the best sources for uh, foreign newspapers, specifically Irish newspapers? Um, there are, uh, and I'm not going to be able to pull them out of my head, but there okay. are a couple of things when you Google Irish newspapers that you can get online for free, mm -hmm. thanks to the Irish government made them available. And it ends in .ie, but off the top of my head, it's not coming to me. That's okay. Yeah, um, there are Irish newspapers available. Also, um, newspaper archives says they've got like 30 plus foreign newspapers. They're, they're there, there's some. Newspapers.com has some. Um, I have a handout, which I don't have access to right now. It's, it's I created it, I don't know, five years ago. But I do have it. If you email me, I'll send you what I know about Irish newspapers and where you can find them. And likewise, there are Irish American newspapers that are available. Again, mm -hmm. email me. It's right here in my handout. Um, come on. Email me, info at janineslist.com. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I was going to show you one more thing that I thought was worth. Oh, availed search. Okay. I'm going to stop searching. And then this is like your payoff for the night. So let's open newspapers. No, let's just do a Google search. Okay, so back to Zoom. I'm gonna look for Google right there. Okay, I'm gonna look for, everybody sees this? Yes. Rita? Okay, uh, D Quadrini, put that in quotes. And by the way, none of these are case sensitive. And 1955 and Syracuse. And let's see what we get. Okay, Syracuse Public Records. Oh, don't do this to me. Okay, we're gonna pull out Syracuse. This usually works really well. Rita D. Quadrini, 1955. There is a veiled... <laughs> okay, we're gonna do it with my father's name instead. November 20th, 1955. I did not misspell her name. Um, I'm going to take it out of quote marks. Put this in quote marks. Uh, here's where I'm going. If you ask for the right combination, you're going to get to newspapers.com. It's free. Oh, come on, man. Rita Quadrini. I used to be able to do this, and they probably know that I'm teaching tonight and they're trying to embarrass me. Okay. Carl, York. Okay. Do this one more time. Carl Bjork, newspapers.com. All right. I do not have, there we go, clipping service. That's not my dad. It's not my dad. The one on the top is not my dad, but we're still going to do it. Um, so this is a clipping that somebody did. And I don't know why my parents aren't coming up right now, because it always works for me and it's not working tonight. And I feel terrible. But somebody clipped a story about a Carl Bjork from Des Moines. And I can see their clipping and I can get to the OCR. And I'm sorry, I'm going to have to make this bigger because I can't see right now. Okay. Where's the clipping? Clipping. So this whole page is coming up. Show me Carl. He's got to be an obituary in here. Control is a spined. Bjork, B-J-O-R-K. Show me Bjork. There it is. Carl Bjork of Albert City, Iowa deaths. And it's in there once. 
my point is, is I don't subscribe. I don't have newspapers.com open right now, but it's coming up for me. Okay. Um, and again, it's a veiled search. What they're trying to do is to encourage you to, oh, I am open. Let me undo that. Um, I want to show you, mean, you, you, have so, you have so many tabs open. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, uh, you I don't have, know. You yeah, you should be. Um, so here's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now that I'm not, I'm not open as a subscriber, it's still coming up. Okay. And it's telling you that this is available. I have so many, of, um, open, I'm going to be doing a program about how I do genealogy searches for a library for the Westchester County genealogical society. I'm doing it October 6th. I'm going to show them why I always have so many tabs open because I'm constantly going back and forth from stuff. Okay, so back to this page. So this page, which I can't see right now, let's make it bigger, as big as it wants to be. This page is showing me Carl Bjork again for free from May 2003. And I should be able to get to the OCR, excuse me for scrolling across here. I should be able to get to the OCR too. Um, control find, control F, this is on your handout. OCR, control F, come on. O, control F, OCR. All right, I am going down in flames right now and this always works for me. So anyway, I got to see somebody else's clipping from the Des Moines Register. And the person who clipped was U.S. Shansford Appa, whatever. Um, and I can like look at stuff that he's also clipped. And who knows, he may be a relative of mine I've never met, or he may be searching the same family that I'm not aware of. So I think it's totally cool that you can go into Google and you can get into newspapers.com without actually subscribing to newspapers.com. I just found it, OCR. I can see the whole page now. Right. <coughs> and I know, because I can read a story, is this my Carl Bjork? By looking at a page of OCR, excuse me for coughing. <coughs> okay, that, that is my payoff for you. Go into okay, Google. Right and put the right keywords in and you'll find newspapers.com comes up for you. Yeah, Janine, thanks for uh, thanks for uh, going over the handout briefly and thanks for the uh, little uh, extra nugget at the end there. Um, so we've uh, hit 8.15, I, I do wanna stop. Um, I wanna thank Janine. Let's give Janine a big virtual round of applause for uh, being so generous with her time and teaching, her, teaching us so, so much in 75 minutes. And uh, folks, as I, as I mentioned previously, uh, look for that email tomorrow with the recording, uh, with the handout, uh, and with information about some other upcoming virtual genealogy programs. Janine, any last words before we log off? Feel free to contact me. I will give you five minutes of my time if I can help. Yep. Oh, that's very nice. So thanks so much, Janine. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. And everyone have a great night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a good one, Janine. Bye-bye.